Wallwood is a very special blue dye, the one I use for truth and zest over dyed with goldenrod. This fall I had the opportunity to visit Germany and arranged for my second visit to a town called Erfurt, the center of the medieval German woad trade. Weid is the German name for this plant. I obtained a supply of woad dye and with this video would like to give this wonderful blue gold dye its due. Located in central Germany, Erfurt and the surrounding area specialized in growing, processing and trading woad, the only source of blue dye in Europe. During the Middle Ages, woad dyers were artisans and were highly regarded, bringing wealth and prominence to their region. Every day, except for Sundays between Pentecost and the Feast of St. Michael, which is in September, woad could be purchased in the main square of Erfurt. Woad was sold in balls, consisting of fermented, macerated woad leaves, and were ready to be added to a vat to be once again fermented before fabric was added. Only then did the gorgeous dove blue reveal itself. Woad is a biennial plant from the cruciferous family. It begins from a taproot, which can grow longer than 1.5 meters giving a rosette of 15 to 20 simple, rounded, blue-green leaves in the first year, when it is harvested. The sun-dried leaves were macerated in a horse-drawn woad mill to create woadmas, and then were shaped by hand into balls and allowed to dry and ferment in the sun. This drying increased the intensity of the indigo tin, the blue dye, in the middle of the ball by 5 to 10 percent. When the ball was required to dye with, it was pulverized and then wetted and fermented again frequently over a period of months or even years. It is likely that this wetting was done with human urine, which contains the acids in correct ratios for the fermentation to take place. Dye houses, called woad junkers, were traditionally located above or next to pubs for this reason, and young boys up to 14 years old were hired as woad pinklers. This newly fermented powder was then added to the dye vat and mixed with an alkaline such as wood ash to allow the indigo tin to attach itself to the fabric. The correct alkalinity was very important for this step since indigo is not water soluble in an in and of itself. It is said that much experience and many senses were used in those days to ascertain the readiness of the vat for the dyeing step. The process described above has been used for millennia, a fact proven by very thorough archaeological research. Dyed textile remains from the Neolithic, Bronze and Iron Ages have been unearthed and analyzed. Ancient Egyptians' mummies were bound in cloths dyed with Isatis tinctoria. Historical accounts about the use of woad in Europe date back to Roman times. Sources dating from the time of Caesar report that Celtic and Germanic people used woad dye that bloom like tattoos, painting their bodies to instill fear in their enemies. From the 12th to the 17th century, Woad was cultivated in Europe as a dye and for medicinal purposes. This can be deduced from the plant's botanical name. The term Isatis derives from the Latin word Isazian and the Greek word Isada, Isadso is linked to its ancient use to treat wounds. The term Tinctoria refers to the use that was done in the dye works. The use of woad and the woad guilds themselves declined in the 15th century as indigo, indigofera tinctoria, became available via the Silk Road from India and Bangladesh and then completely died out in the 19th century as synthetic dyes took over all natural dye sources for use in clothing. Now there is a renewed interest and a sense of urgency in relearning ancient dyes and dye practices
combining them with responsible farming in our efforts to clean up the fashion industry. Whenever I make a woad or indigo, indigo vat, I'm always amazed and usually confused by the complexity of the process. I liken it to witchcraft because it so seldom works correctly and I resort to the use of thiox to finally get some dye on the fabric. This year, I won't allow myself to do that. And this little dissertation is part of my efforts to make sense of the whole process. Thank you for listening.